Lisa, and this is Celebration Elevation. And if you watched last week, my video, thank you for coming back. And if you're new to this week, then thank you for stopping by and trying it out. If you like the content in this video, please hit subscribe and the like button. And also I would love to hear your comments. If you wanna hear about some specific event you have coming up, if you want ideas for that, let me know. I would love that. So today I am gonna to talk to you about the things that I talked about in my blog this week on celebrationelevation.com. So I talked about my son and daughter-in-law's engagement party, which was last March, March of 2020. And then I also talked about stations for parties, which is very helpful. If you're having a big party, I really recommend that you break it down into stations. Um, it makes things so much easier like when we had this party, we had 80 plus guests coming. And if I would have thought to myself, okay, we're having a party and there's like a ton of guests coming and I, ha I just have to plan this whole event, I think it would have freaked me out. Um, even if we've had experience throwing parties, it's still, it's a lot. So if you break it down and just actually take a list and start writing down what you want to have at your party, like for instance, we had a sangria bar, so that was like one station. We had a popcorn bar. We had a table that had the votive candles that we were giving as uh, favors. We had the food table. You know, it's just, we broke it down that way and it was a lot easier to handle. And you can sit there and sort of think about what you wanna have at your party and think about the different stations that you're gonna have. So first is the sangria station. Uh, we had that with, my daughter-in-law asked for that and I was happy to oblige. Um, we actually, I was going to make the sangria. I had recipes. I was looking through them all and then I thought, okay, that's ridiculous. There's so many people, they're going to be drinking sangria this whole party and I'm going to be in the kitchen the entire time making it and I won't get to enjoy my guests. And that's another thing. Make sure you get your stuff done ahead of time so that you can enjoy the party. That's the hardest part. I had one party a long time ago and I remember being in the kitchen and there were guests that were leaving and as they left, they came in to say goodbye to me and I, I hadn't even seen them yet. I hadn't said hello. So, so try to enjoy your guests and your party. It's your event. So for the sangria bar, we went to Total Wine and we got a boxed sangria and it was really good. I'll put the brand for that in my on my blog and hopefully on the description below so that you can uh, look that up but it was really good. And all I did was I added about three quarters of the sangria. I did white and red, and I put about a quarter of the, the container, the dispenser was 7-Up or Sprite. So it just gave it a little extra fizz. And then I put some fruit in the dispenser, just really it was more for looks because what I did was I had these little, um, little galvanized, pails, little galvanized buckets for the fruit. So I just cut fruit up. Uh, we did like lemons, limes, oranges, all kinds of berries, sliced apples, and you just cut them into like bite-sized pieces so they'll fit in your little cups. <laughs> and then these I got at Hobby Lobby and I looked online to see if I if they still have them because it was quite a while ago. They don't have these exact ones, but they have very similar. So I did put the link for those on my uh, website. So you can look those up. They're really cheap. They're like under $2 each. So we just had a bunch of them. I labeled what the fruit was and we had that on the, on the bar, on the counter area. And then we had a couple of big dispensers, the kind with the little spout. So we had the red wine in one, the white wine in one. We had the fruit all over the counter. And we had little um, picks. I'm gonna show you these, but they have dye on them because I colored the mason jar earlier to show you. So these little uh, cocktail picks are what I had up there so that people could stick them in their fruit and pull that out of the sangria after it had soaked in there and they drank their sangria. It's actually very good. So uh, we did that. And then I had straws uh, up at the little counter area. And then I had a popcorn bar and that was fun. We did two big buckets. I used these galvanized big uh, buckets that I, we got at Ace Hardware and we put popcorn in there. Again, I thought about uh, actually 
making my own popcorn and then I thought no that's stupid <laughs> so I bought it on Amazon I bought a big bag and it was actually really good it was a white gourmet popcorn and it was very very good and so we used that we put it in the big buckets I actually bought two bags uh, which was ridiculous it was way too much so don't do that <laughs> and if we had over 80 people and we still had plenty left and hadn't even gotten into the second bag so one bag is probably plenty for your event. Uh, so we had that popcorn bar. We had these little boxes, these little paper boxes that people could put their popcorn in. And then we had toppings so people could add them to their popcorn. So we had things like M&Ms, Reese's Pieces, mini chocolate chips, coconut. Then we had little shakers of uh, like seasoned salt and butter, salt for popcorn. And you could use, and cinnamon, sugar, uh, you could use even like caramel drizzle, chocolate drizzle, whatever you want. You can get creative on that, um, wh whatever you like on your popcorn. So that was a good station. So we had a breathalyzer station also at our front door. It was just a little table that had a breathalyzer on it and the little disposable tips to the breathalyzer so that our guests who may have overindulged in the sangria bar could just stop by and check their blood alcohol level before they drove away. And we usually do that at our parties if we're having alcohol served so that people can check that. We also had the uh, little station by the door that had the votive candles that we used for um, favors. And so I'll show you those too. So what I'm gonna show you with the votive candles is we bought these little, these little votive holders. Um, these were on Amazon. They're like mercury glass. They have different, these are rose colored, but they have gold and they had silver. Um, you could use whatever kind you want. And then there's just little tea lights inside them. And then I ordered these little match boxes and they're so cute. They have, um, they have a little sticker on the front and you get them personalized. Like mine said, Marissa and Kevin, a match made in heaven. Um, and then you just put the stickers on little boxes. So then I just took a little, a little hair elastic, a little, um, it's like a clear hair elastic that you can buy at CVS or wherever. Just stuck it to the front and then put this in the little organza um, gift bag. And so when they looked like this and they were all sitting by the front door, it was very cute. So people got to take those home. I like to give favors where people can actually use them later. It's not just something they kind of throw on their counter and then a month later they throw away finally because they feel guilty but <laughs> so anyway that was uh the favors um we also had lawn games okay so this this party was planned in march and we live in northern california so it's usually mild weather um that week was forecast uh just very mild weather the whole week and then all of a sudden it showed up the the day of the party was going to be rain and so I was so worried about that. We were having, we were planning to have a lot of the party outside in our backyard. We have a covered patio. So we had lawn games prepared and I figured everybody would eat out there. But we also had um, heaters, patio heaters. And we had a station at our party that had blankets. So I got blankets off of Amazon in bulk. They were just very inexpensive blankets. I rolled them up and tied them with some twine and put them in a little basket by the door, by the back door, so people could grab those on their way out and nobody would be cold. There's nothing worse than feeling like your, your guests are completely uncomfortable freezing or whatever. So the rain we had to deal with, um, but it was okay. We had a plan B, always have a plan B, I would say for your events that you're having outdoors. So we cleaned out the garage and we put a lot of the lawn games in the garage so that people could play. There was one game we had that was, uh, I just took beer bottles. There were, you could use beer bottles for beer bottles. It sounds like we're alcoholics because I have the sangria bar and I'm talking about beer bottles, but I promise we're not. Um, but we took the beer bottles, spray painted them, and then put them in a little wine box that had dividers. And then I, I used embroidery hoops um, to do the ring toss. On my website, I show, uh, I use metal embroidery hoops, but I show that you can get these bamboo ones 
that would be much easier. You could paint some of them one color, some of them another color, and have your party with the two different colors for teams. You can have anything like, you know, if it's, if the night, if the weather's nice, you have a lot of options. You could do bocce ball, you could do cornhole, you could do washers. There's a lot of fun games that you could have on your lawn. Um, so I was telling you that the party was rain, that we had a lot of rain that day. I was really worried about that. But it turned out that the biggest worry was COVID-19. This turned out to be mid-March in, in 2020. And so California hadn't been hit yet um, substantially with COVID before that. Uh, that week, we were just starting to hear about it. We're up in more rural area, but I know in the, the San Francisco Bay area, they started having closures. And we were so worried that the party we'd have to cancel, we didn't know. It, it was just, it was a scary time because we weren't sure exactly how to prepare for it. I had a ton of hand sanitizer all over the place so people could use that. But I didn't know if people were gonna show up. And so that morning there were a few people that called and said, are you still having the party? And we said, yeah, we are. So people came, we had pretty much everyone come. There were a few people that were from the San Francisco Bay area that didn't come but most of our friends and family were able to make it. Then the very next day, uh, California shut down. We had the stay at home orders and we were so scared that one of our guests or more of our guests would um, start experiencing symptoms, might get sick. So my husband and I, for two weeks, we crossed our fingers and prayed really hard that nobody, that we didn't cause like an outbreak in California. And um, thankfully, none of our guests got sick from, at least not from our party, not for that next two weeks, thankfully. But that was completely unexpected. Who was expecting a pandemic to hit during their child's engagement party? <laughs> so right now I wanna to talk to you about the um, tinted mason jar with fairy lights. So my best friend, the mason jar, um, this one's a large one. This is what we used for the engagement party, but today for demonstration purposes, I, I got one of the small ones so I can show you this one. So what you want to do is just get your, get your mason jar and a little like paper cup or something. Um, and then take some Mod Podge. And what I say in the blog is about a quarter cup. And it just depends on how much you're doing. I'm not doing very much, so I actually probably put too much in here, but that's okay. Um, and then the other thing is I'm going to use this uh, Wilton cake tint for uh, icing tinting for decorating cakes. So I was gonna, the blue is what I've used before, which is what gave this really pretty color, which I thought was really really beautiful um but i thought today i'm going to try to mix a couple and um make green <laughs> so i'm taking some blue and mine is kind of um dried a little dried up <laughs> so what i'm using too is just i'm using these little picks these were actually the same ones that we used uh for the engagement party for the sangria bar um so let's see what i'm doing is i'm just mixing Mixing the tint up in this cup with the Mod Podge. And so hopefully, ooh, it'll get a nice green color. Looks like it's fine too. Okay, so I finished mixing my, my dye up. So I will show you what it looks like. So this is the Mod Podge. This is blue and green just mixed up together. So I have my brush. Paint a very, a pretty thin layer because what I did the first time I did this is I thought, oh, I want it thick because I want a good layer on here. But thick made it, uh, it, it didn't get as tinted. You could see a lot of opaque areas and it just didn't look as good. So go for uh, a light hand with this and just do a fairly thin coat. And what I'm gonna do is um, I will go put this in the oven. I have a, just a baking pan. I put some parchment paper in it. You could put aluminum foil if that's what you have. Either one is fine. 
then you're going to use um, your oven set it at 180 and you're going to do this cover your whole um, mason jar and then we're going to bake it in the oven so you're just going to put it this direction put it just um, the top of your mason jar down and then bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes and I will uh, check it in 20 minutes and then I'm gonna actually bring this one back and show you what it looks like when it's finished baking. I will bake it right now. Um, so I think it'll be pretty and I don't have any green ones so this will be cute. <laughs> See this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna put this down carefully. Um, and then if you get your finger in it like I just did, <laughs> just touch it up when it's on your parchment paper. So, there we go. Um, and it's dyed, so remember, it's going to stain your fingers. That's okay. <laughs> so, uh, I want to show you the finished product of the, um, the glass jar that I got out of the oven. So, this is the mason jar. This was the painted green. I think I said earlier... I mixed uh, yellow, green and blue, but I, mi I mixed yellow and blue. I got the green, painted it on. Like I said, a very thin coat is what you want. And then baked it at 180 for 20 minutes and it came out like this. And then I'll show you um, when you put the little lights in. So cute. Um, see? So this is really cute on the table so you can use little lights in them. The way I did it is I painted on the outside like this so that I could also use these and these were the ones that I used at the party. You could use them as a vase if you do the outside. If you use it, if you paint the inside, which you could also do, um, you cannot put water on the inside. It won't work. So that's why I did the outside of them, but you could do either way. If you want to paint the inside instead and have the outside without having a coating on it, you could do that as well. Either way, it's fine, and either way, it looks really cute. So I hope you enjoyed these tips for a rustic party. You could have this for any kind of event. It doesn't have to be a specific event. It doesn't have to be, it could be a birthday party. It doesn't have to be, it could just be a party. But it's kind of fun to have the rustic theme because then you can have a lot of outdoor activities and the I think the decorations are a lot of fun for that. So I hope you like the tips for this one. And thank you again for watching this video. Please have patience with me. I promise I will get better. And stay tuned for the bloopers. And then also come back and see me next Friday. I hope you will. And thanks again. Bye. Hi, I'm Tracy. Hi, I'm Teresa. This is Celebration Elevation, and thank you for watching today. That sounded dumb again. <laughs> get it together, get it together. Okay. Um, I had a Hi, I'm Teresa. <laughs> okay, this is... <clears throat> what are you doing? Yeah, the giggles. Okay, so my mason jar is in the oven cooking. And I'm going to tell you about the... Um... <sighs> Don't say that. Um, bags. And then we have these on a little display by the door. And...